Bow <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Emily. And this is a very special podcast of What Makes. And today we're going to talk about What Makes a CD. Or I call it What Makes Emily a Star. <laughs> That's how I roll. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to interview you for this one. This is going to be all about you, Emily Sternfeld. Okay. Then. Okay. Okay. Should we look in there, or should we look at each other? Maybe both. Okay. Okay, let's do both. This is our first podcast where we've done a video as well as a... Is it a vlog cast? I, I, a vlog cast? Oh God, I guess, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway. So, Emily, you have a very exciting project you're working on. I do. I'm recording a CD. Yes. Tell me about it. Okay. So, I'm going to record two song cycles. Uh, one is by Jake Heggy, and it's called Eve Song. And it's a song cycle based on feminist poems about Eve from Adam and Eve. Um, the poetry is by Philip Little. Um, and I've been singing that for about 10 years. It's a really great piece of music, and I'm so excited to um, get it recorded. I do not believe there's a full recording. There is. Oh, there is one. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's I'm going to not... add, this will be the second one, so that'll be good. Um, and then I'm also going to record a song cycle called Too Few the Mornings Be by Ricky Ian Gordon. And it's a set of um, 11 poems by Emily Dickinson that Ricky Ian Gordon set. And they're really beautiful pieces of music. And they're newer to me, but I was introduced to them when I uh, was in a master class with Ricky Ian Gordon a couple years ago. And so I'm really excited to record those as well. Okay, so tell, let's talk about the process a little bit. For sure. those of you who don't know how a CD is made. So you are going to be going where in August? In August? Yeah. Nowhere. I'm here in Wichita. At a, in a concert hall. Right. Okay. So here's the deal. <laughs> so I've record I've I've signed a recording contract with Parma Productions and we have a release date of March 2018. And so what Parma is doing is they are helping me to record these these works. And they will do some um, edit, or I think we're doing, we're editing, doing the editing, but they're going to do some post-production work. They're going to market the CD. They're going to create the actual physical, physical product, thing. Put it up on the webs, the interwebs. Yeah. Um, and so end of July, beginning of August, I have, um, is our recording date, our recording session. And it'll be recording here in Wichita. We have an engineer who's coming to work with us who we're really excited about. Um, Parma's uh, providing a producer who we're also really excited about. And my good friend and colleague, Amanda Finneger, will be playing piano for me. And we've been working together for about four years. And so... Is that true? Yeah. She's played both of these um, song cycles for me several times in recitals. Um, and so I'm really excited for us to do this together and to create this product. So... It used to be, back in the days of rock stars and when CDs, well, when tapes made money, uh, these record companies would sign a artist onto their label and give them a ton of money to go make three or four CDs. And that still happens. Sometimes. Sometimes. For, like, Taylor Swift. And even then, it's actually, well, that's a whole thing. But your CD isn't going to work like that. And no. most classical CDs don't work like that anymore, unless you're Yo-Yo Mama. So, how does it work for you? So, I'm paying for everything, basically. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a huge investment, and that's really how I'm looking at it for myself. I'm investing a, a, a large sum of money into this project to kind of make my mark as an artist, um, just kind of in the world, and also to contribute to the canon that already exists of recordings of contemporary American music. Um, so... So everything that Parma is doing for me, which I'm so excited about, I pay for. Um, the things that they are not doing for me, like paying for my accompanist and the hall rental and all that, um, I am also paying for all <laughs> of that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm paying for everything, which I'm excited to do and happy to do, but it's a lot of money and that's kind of where this Kickstarter comes into So my... yeah, let's talk about part of making a CD, especially in contemporary music, is a fundraising challenge. Yes. And so we're turning, well, you're turning, mm -hmm. to Kickstarter. I am. And you have a goal. I do. I have a goal of $5,000 that um, I need to raise fully in order to receive any of the funds. 
Um, that's kind of how Kickstarter works. And um, each person can only donate once. Um, yeah. Is that true? Mm -hmm. But you can share it and you can ask your friends and family to donate, which is so wonderful and helpful. There are incentives set up for each level that you pledge. There are incentives that you will receive, like a signed CD and... Um, there's just a lot of fun stuff, and you can check it out. So what you're saying is if, say, I, would, I donated $50, I would win a prize. I guess. <laughs> you can call it that. I think that's sexier than incentive. Oh, okay, cool. You win a prize. You get a prize. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so like I said, I have to raise the full amount, otherwise I don't receive any of the money. Um, and the $5,000, is, is that the full cost of the CD? No. It's just a fraction. It's just a fraction of the cost of the CD. But these funds that you donate um, toward this Kickstarter will directly cover the costs of the hall rental, of my accompanist, of the engineer, of the producer, of piano tuning. Hopefully, um, maybe it will cover a little bit of editing time um, on our parts. Um, yeah. So, uh, why should I give you my hard-earned money? Do you consider yourself someone who supports the arts? Yes. Well, this is like a direct, tangible way to do, the, to do that. Um, you, there's not a lot of funding, public funding from the state or from anywhere to cover kind of projects like this. There are some grants, but not a lot of them are for people who are, are not affiliated with a university or a school. And fun fact, Kansas is one of the only states in the country that doesn't have an arts council. A lot of times, artists will turn to their local arts council for funds, but not Kansans. <clears throat> no. So, I'm in a tough position, and so, you know, this is an opportunity for you to directly contribute to the arts. And so, I just ask if I've touched you, your life through my art, or if I've invested my time and talents into your child, teaching them, or, or cultivating a love of music in them, or increasing their musicianship. I just ask maybe if you would take the time to consider um, investing in me and investing my career. It's not a proper investment, I can't say that, but um, it will help me reach my goal. Um, so yeah, that's why you should contribute. I think it's an investment in you. Well, Kickstarter says you can't like offer you can't offer investors. Like, oh, so we have to be careful with that term. But but here's what's gonna happen: you're gonna release a CD. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> When you win the Grammy, you will thank all of your Kickstarter con contributors. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that should be an incentive. Donate like $5,000, and, and if I'll you win a Grammy, Grammy, I'll thank you. Okay, that's I'll thank it. you live on the Grammys. I like that. Yeah. Well, let me just say something, because I actually contribute frequently to people who donate Kickstarters, and I want to tell you why I yeah. donate for Kickstarters. I think it's really important in this day and age that we support contemporary art. I think a lot of large organizations have moved away from doing that. And so smaller artists who are maybe unknown, who are creating art and music right now, need some support. And I think it's important because it still tells the story of our time, tells the story that is relevant to our society. And I think one of the reasons I'm going to contribute to this Kickstarter is not just because I'm your husband, <laughs> but I think feminism is really important. And what mm -hmm. I like about these two song cycles is they have sort of a strong feminist point of view. Yeah. Um, and so that's the kind of art that I want to support. So I'm going to give you some money. Thank you. I can't wait for my signed CD <laughs> or poster or other special prize. I mean, <laughs> what other, listen, whatever if there's incentive. an incentive that you want, <laughs> you just send me a message and we'll make it work. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's my Kickstarter project. Um, I'm really excited to do it. I'm excited to share it with you. And um, if you feel so moved, I'd, I'd be so appreciative if you would help me reach this goal. And the CD comes out when? Uh, March of 2018. And you can get it on? Do you know? I don't even know. Amazon. Amazon iTunes, uh -huh. CD Baby. You can stream it on Noxos. You can stream it on uh, Pandora. Probably I'll sell it on my website. You'll sell it on your website. Yeah, yeah. You'll, we can stream it on Spotify. Heck yes. It's going to be available everywhere. everywhere. So even if you don't contribute to the Kickstarter, which you should, you can still... Yeah, you can still enjoy it when it's Listen finished. to the music, buy the CD, enjoy yeah. it. All yeah. right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.